Good evening and welcome to another exciting episode of the Men's Lounge. Today we are here to bring you a very important discussion. Last week uh, we discussed the, uh, uh, a very important issue as well and uh, we got quite divergent views on all that and it was quite interesting. Um, if, you've, if you've been on our pages, you see all those short videos of some of the statements that we put out there and people's thoughts. It was quite interesting. Now, um, before I even proceed, let me still remind you about something. Now, it's beginning to look as though we are, f or we are gradually forgetting about the presence of corona. But interestingly, if you have been to the health facilities and you've seen what's going on there, you will think twice. I urge you all to keep keeping safe. Okay, keep keeping safe. The protocols are very important. Let's not forget about them. And uh, keep, uh, I mean, stay away from, from people that we, we probably suspect or we see that they have some symptoms of certain coughs and all that. It's very, very important. And um, feel free again today and uh, join us on all our social uh, media platforms, starting with WhatsApp, which is uh, 020-222054. And then on Facebook, um, Instagram, Twitter, at ETV Ghana, you can get us over there. And so um, let me just give you this um, information. Last week, I spoke about how when Mother's Day is approaching, it becomes a whole press conference. But when it's Father's Day, we don't hear anything. This year, we are watching. Okay. We, the men, we are watching. We'll see what the, the mothers do for us as well because we, we do a lot for them when it comes to uh, Mother's Day. I'm speaking especially uh, with regards to our wives and partners. So this Mother's Day, give your mom the pampering she deserves with the Mother's Day combo package from Lotus Detox and Wellness Center. This package includes over two hours of soothing foot detox. Mm, soothing. You know that the word soothing, pronouncing it alone makes you even feel like, oh, wow, it makes you even calm. So... Soothing foot detox, manicure, pedicure, and oil massage treatment for only 480 Ghana cities. Only 480, 480 Ghana cities. So Lotus Detox and Wellness Center is the first detox center in Ghana that provides holistic, natural, and personalized health care combining proven traditional therapies with state-of-the-art modern technologies to effectively improve your overall health. Check out their website, lotusgh.com, to know more about unique services and programs. Or call them, or, you, I mean, their number is both call and then WhatsApp, okay? So 0557-558-917. Call them to book an appointment. Let me again remind you that Mother's Day is coming soon. Tell us about that amazing woman who isn't your biological mother, but has impacted you positively over the years, you stand a chance of winning a big, a big prize to celebrate her on Mother's Day. Down. Let me show you how you're going to go about it, okay? Share your unique story on ETV Ghana's African Women Voices show that is broadcast at 8 p.m. every Wednesday on ETV Ghana, your world of quality TV. Hmm. I will go on my very first break. When I'm back, I'll introduce my guest, and then we we'll go straight to the point. Today, we are discussing prostate issues. I'll tell you about it when we are back. Please stay with us. Welcome back. If you're joining us, we just entered the lounge and I'm going to be having my discussions today with Dr. Bernard Tobo. Dr. Bernard Tobo is, should I tell you about him or he'd probably allow him to speak for himself. Doc. You know, we already know you, but <laughs> we'll still ask you to speak a little. Right. You can watch it. It's been a while. Uh, mm. uh, nah, I didn't see Kakra. It's <laughs> Corona. Corona is just keeping you away from us. Because yeah, you guys yeah. you guys in the front line have become so busy. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. And, uh, and the thing about the pandemic, too, is that uh, uh, we don't forget other diseases. Yeah. Yes, yeah. we still focus on Focus them, on so the others. Yeah. So it double, it double makes you even busier. Exactly. Mm. exactly. So Dr. Bernard Tobo is a urologist um, at the Kolebu Teaching Hospital. And uh, talking about urologist, I'm sure I'll allow him to give you more of the terms. You see, me, I'm, a, I'm also a doctor, but I, I take care of other things, <laughs> not what he does. We, are two, we have two separate, uh, you know, um, uh, duties, let me put it that way. So men today have a high risk of prostate issues. At some point in their lives, um, the statistics are very alarming. How your prostate health um, and what is your, how is your prostate health and what is um, your status? It's something that we we'll need to find out. Let me also remind you, you know, prostate for men is actually gradually become a man's, uh, it's becoming a man's corona, you know. So, so if, 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 if corona scares you, then what we are going to discuss should scare a man even the most. So once again, Doc, yeah. Thank you very much mm. indeed. From this distance, I'm sure we can 
we, we can do this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Good to see you. Good to see yeah. you. So, mm. so today we are discussing prostate. Yeah. And like I did mention that uh, it's it's become almost uh, a man's corona. If I say a man's corona, it's become a man's. Uh, 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 it's like a, how do I put it? I mean, it's like a bane when it yeah. comes to a man's issues. It's become yeah. a, a huge problem mm. for the reasons of corona and others. We seem to have slightly forgotten about the presence of prostate, prostate cancer. And I want us to uh, take a very deep look at what it is. It's the reason why I want you to be here alone, so I can <laughs> have, you have time for me. <laughs> yes, so let's, let's start this way. Yeah. How would we define prostate cancer? Okay, um, thank you very much, and then good evening to our cherished viewers. Uh, before we come to the cancer, mm. um, let's look at what the prostate, prostate actually is. is. Yes. Okay, so what's the um, prostate? Um, there's no, you know, Ghanaian or vernacular name for it. Really? It's, you know, prostate in your is actually derived from Latin, prostato, prostato, for a gatekeeper. Okay. And that's uh, kind of explained one of his roles, the roles that it plays. So it is just at the bladder neck, and it is more or less like an accessory sex organ. I mean, it produces the semen mm. that helps to nourish the sperm. Okay. You know, the sperm is produced by the testis, and then it comes all the way towards where the prostate is. Mm. So the semen nourishes the sperm so that it can have the capacity to, to swim. And then as the gatekeeper role, it also helps in controlling the urine outflow. Just that when you're growing, the prostate also enlarges and starts causing mm. um, problems. But by and large, it is deep behind the pubic bone, so at the neck of the bladder, and then subserves you know, those roles. Now, coming back to your original question, what prostate cancer is, you know, um, every cell is governed by a constitution, mm -hmm. which is called the DNA. So it's just like you having a country, having, you know, a rule of law. Yeah. So as a cell, you, you are born, you divide, you serve your role, and then when it's time for you to die, you, die and go. you pack out. Mm. But when certain cell lines become immortalized, in other words, the time that the signal is given for them to pass away, for other cell lines, you know, to take over, they don't. Then they continue to grow perpetually. And as they grow, um, they have to acquire new, they have to increase in size, so they go looking for where blood vessels are. And that is the basis of cancer spreading. Okay. So when it happens that way, then we see that the cell has become cancerous. Mm. And prostate cancer is no exception. Is no exception. As to what actually causes the cancer in the prostate, it is still a matter of debate. You know, it is still largely unknown. But we know things that predisposes or that causes that, you know, twerk in the DNA. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That causes the mutation that, that then DNA. leads to... Yes, that leads mm, to the cancer mm, formation. Mm. And I'm sure we'll talk about some of these. Yeah, we definitely will. So, so, so let, me, let me just ask you this one. Um, so who is, at, who is at risk when it comes to prostate cancer? So um, generally speaking, it is said that prostate cancer is a disease of aging. Mm. So as you age further, the, 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 there is more, you are more likely to you know, um, develop that disease. And it's thought to be due to, well, you being exposed to uh, the risk factors for a prolonged or a longer, longer time. period of time. Mm -hmm. And um, so age is one notable risk factor. Mm -hmm. And then when you compare all the races, uh, we Africans, or whether we are in the continent or in the diaspora, seem to be at higher risk. In fact, it is thought that Africans tend to have even a more aggressive form of the disease, mm. you know, than other races. Um, the Orientals, the Chinese, Koreans, etc., seems to have a lower incidence. Okay. And it is thought to be, for them, it is thought to be quite environmental, their diet. Mm. They seem to take a lot of plant products and then, you know, fish um, uh, with their omega-3 fatty acids, which are very, very... Mm. useful, mm. very, very protective on mm. the prostate. But when a Chinese moves to the U.S. and adopts a westernized diet, now I say, mm. yes. They also get, 
uh, it becomes a, huge, a, a bigger risk for them. So the incidence among Chinese in the states, for instance, is, is higher. higher than those in the mainland, in the mainland. You know, China. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's where the dietary factor, the environmental factor also come in. So the race, we, are, we seem to be a higher risk. If I quickly talk about the diet, those who engage in very high fat diet, you know, so the cheese, the milk, the dairy products, uh, you know, meat, mm. Uh, mm. lean meat is better. So something like chicken, mm. yeah, um, 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 un, um, unskinned, you know, chicken, not the one with the, with the skin, it tends okay. to be better. Mm. And then moving towards fish, okay, that is also, you know, cool. And then adopting a diet of, you know, fruits and vegetables, that also tends to lower you know the risks. I mean, yeah. it's 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 obvious we've had these things over and over and over. But for some reason, I guess our tongue is always misleading <laughs> us because again, we want to taste. Then we want, you know we want to taste it on, on our tongue and 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 feel the taste and and, and be happy than the, the, what it does for us in the end. And so people are led to eating all sort of junk. Excuse well, my language, but yeah, that's obviously one of the things that's leading. Us. But doc, when yeah. you were speaking, you yeah. made mention of. Um, the fact that it's still a debate trying to even figure out what uh, specifically is, is, is causing it. Or yeah. We know what risk factors are leading to those causes, mm -hmm. but what is causing it is still a debate. Yeah. But let me find out, especially also out of the, uh, the fact that in our part of the world, it seems to be higher. Mm -hmm. Could it be that it's just a general DNA thing for Africans? I mean, it's just something I'm... I'm so... Um, you know, there's a lot of research going on mm. uh, with regard to cancers in general and even prostate cancer. cancer. There's a worldwide research in which we are also collaborating, and particularly for us, you know, Africans, trying to find out what actually is the main, you know, um, trigger point. Because remember, like I said, the DNA is the constitution yeah. governing whatever happens in the body. Mm -hmm. And when there's a coup d'etat against that, that DNA, <laughs> yes, that DNA, that is when things go, uh, mm -hmm. uh, you know, havoc. Mm -hmm. As to what actually, it is thought that you know, uh, andro androgenic exposure. By androgen, I'm talking about the testosterone. Okay. High levels of testosterone, and sometimes that is, you know, the testis is what produces it. Yeah. But fatty diet, you know, even our carbohydrate diet. You know, if it is taken at the wrong time or in excess, um, you know, the body is supposed to burn some of these food products appropriately. But if you are the type who overindulge or, uh, you know, late night eat, for instance, then these things are being converted into uh, 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 abnormal proportions, proportions of fat. Mm. And fat is what may cause production of um, this um, uh, uh, testosterone, which may end up being a trigger, yeah. you know. So these things play s sort of a permissive role. But like I said, it is actually still a matter of debate what the real, real trigger is. And for us in Africa, mm -hmm. I, I was talking to a patient yesterday, something that you cannot explain fully. If you're not, if you're not careful, you can easily conclude that they are <laughs> supernatural <laughs> components <laughs> <laughs> well, to it. But of, of course, <laughs> people will think so, especially because of uh, our kind of systems we've had in the past and our beliefs and all that. So, yeah, I, I'm not saying it is right, but I guess you can't blame anybody for thinking like it. So le let me ask you this, Doc. Um, what are some of the risk factors? So I started by talking about the age. The age. As Aging a factor. obviously is one. Yes. And then, and then where you belong. For us Africans... Yeah. Uh -huh. mm. Yes. Also, then um, the high fat diet. Yeah. And those who lack, you know, vitamin C, vitamin D um, in their diet, mm -hmm. it's also part of it. The vegetables that I talked about, particularly, you know, tomatoes, tomatoes, watermelon, um, garlic, these things contain a lot of antioxidants which and micronutrients which help with the prostate. So if you are not taking some of these things, then you are lacking in essence. Mm. Obesity mm. is okay. one of them because you have abnormal, you know, uh, uh, um, levels of uh, fat, fat deposited yeah. at mm. different parts of the body. And then okay. common things like <laughs> lack of exercise. Of course, that is correlated 
to the um, um, obesity or lifestyle uh, changes in general. Then certain toxins, environmental toxins, uh, that you may be exposed to either mm -hmm. at the industry or, I mean, now Galamse is all over the place. <laughs> and we don't know what may happen in 10, 20 years' time mm -hmm. as part of this. Yeah. Alcohol and smoking, these terrible twins. <laughs> you, you think they are twins, Because eh? <laughs> they, almost, they almost move together. They are implicated in so many things. <laughs> uh, and prostate cancer is uh. no, no exception. So, by and large, these are some of the some of the risk factors involved. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. so, so, are there are there are there some some early some early stage symptoms that we should be aware of? That is the interesting thing about um, prostate cancer. Most often than not, the early tumors don't show with any symptoms. They are virtually asymptomatic. Mm. If they would show symptoms at all. You know, the, the prostate itself is made up of different kinds of tissues. Okay. And there is another type of prostate disease called uh, BPH, mm -hmm. benign prostatic hyperplasia. That is a non-cancerous enlargement of the prostate. Now, you can have a small cancer growing in BPH. So sometimes you may just show the symptoms of BPH like going to pee and standing there for a long time before it starts. And sometimes you have to push for the urine to start. And when it's coming, it's very slow, or it breaks in between. Or you think you are finished, but there's still some left. Or you have to ring your bell. Mm -hmm. you know? mm -hmm. <laughs> Shake the thing up, otherwise your panty will get wet. wet or some yeah. people waking up several times you know, to pee, or peeing several times during the day. All these things can be symptoms related to BPH. But you can have BPH with an early cancer developing within. It doesn't mean that the benign can turn to cancer, no. Okay. Uh -huh. I was actually going to ask you whether yeah. it's the same thing that turns into cancer. Not, not at all. Okay. Not at all. So generally, most of them are asymptomatic at mm. the early phase. Mm. If you may have symptoms, then probably it is more due to the benign enlargement but with a small cancer hiding somewhere. And then some people come with the complications, showing that the disease had already, you know, uh, the bed had left the cage, literally. Mm. Had, had the, the, the disease had started spreading to nearby structures or other parts of the body. Like the one that I always stress on, back pain. Mm -hmm. Back pain. So <coughs> if you have back pain and you've taken all kinds of painkillers, You've seen somebody who is not a specialist per se, and they be acquire the same old stuff. At least check the prostate. Okay. At least check the prostate because the gland, uh, I mean, the cancer, one of the earliest places they tend to spread to is, is the, the backbone. backbone. Interesting. It's the backbone. It's one of the earliest places. And then there are some middle aged men who, for no reason, I mean, you're not diabetic, you're not stressed out, you're not hypertensive, you don't have cholesterol disease, then. You go light of mm, erectile dysfunction of um, uh, you cannot you cannot simply explain it may be the cancer spreading to the nerves that subserves erection and that can be a presentation mm, mm, you know mm. and some people may even present with uh, yeah, with kidney failure because the cancer spreads to block it goes to that extent exactly wow it spreads to block the tube that leads urine into the bladder. Mm. Mm. And when that happens, there's a backlog of urine locked up in the kidney and then gradually destroys it. So some may present with no symptoms at all. Others may present with symptoms similar to the benign to enlargement. The, yeah. Then some may come with complications or showing that the pain has spread to other parts of the, the body. That's very interesting to note. So, so Doc, um, at, at what point should we begin to think of testing? Know, knowing these early symptoms that you have mentioned, should we immediately test or even before we even see these things, that there should be a routine check from a certain point in our lives as men? So I, I always say that um, for, particularly for us um, um, Africans mm -hmm. or blacks, we are advised to start testing at age 40. 
Okay. That's an empirical, you know, um, age. And, but there are some people, I forgot to mention, you know, the family history, the genetic aspect um, as one of the risk factors. There are some who have the, uh, the disease running through the family. Okay. And we are a certain family where, I mean, father had it, grandfather had it, son <laughs> also had it, cousins. It runs through the family. So instead of 40, we may advise that if you have it running through your family, you may even have to check earlier than that, mm. either 35 or even 30. Okay. Yeah, check earlier than that. So when you hit 40 in general, one of the um, birthday gifts you can <laughs> give to yourself. Is to have yourself checked. Have yourself checked. Yeah. And I mean, your general medicals assessment, mm. and you include the prostate assessment, you know, to it. And it's not so, it's not so expensive. Mm. Yeah, it's not so expensive. Like I said, having in mind that the early cases don't show symptoms. So you don't have to wait for... Wait till you begin yeah, to see something specific exactly. before. Yeah, yeah. Mm. But you know, that, that's even what makes it even more dangerous. Because you don't see anything. And mm. before you realize you're gone, you mm. know. And gone means that, I mean, before you realize it's there. And it's become a problem that you now have to deal with. I, I think that's obviously what makes it very uh, difficult for us. Like I said from the start, I did mention that it's become a man's corona. Looking at how corona scares people, mm -hmm. what this is what scares a man really. Mm -hmm. if, if you want to talk about most of the diseases that men obviously would encounter, I think it is one of the particular ones that scares any man yeah. to even hear the word uh, prostate cancer. So, so doc. Where, sh where should we go to, to have such tests? Can we just walk into any, any, any health facility or there are specifically places that we need to go and something that we need to ensure to see in place before we, we go there to test? So um, fortunately for us, um, most of the labs now are very, very user friendly. Okay. There are some labs um, you can walk in even without request, mm -hmm. you know, without requesting you. Once you mention that you're coming for prostate assessment, they will, uh, they, will, they will gladly do the PSA test. PSA stands for prostate specific antigen. Antigen. Yes. But it's always important to let a qualified person also assess you because the PSA test, which is a blood test, is not the only thing. Um, you may need an examination mm -hmm. because um, an examination is basically, you know, inserting a well-lubricated gloved finger down, uh, you know, up your backside. Okay. Yeah. And to, f to at least assess how the prostate feels. Whether it is, you know, for cancerous changes, it tends to feel hard. Mm. Yeah. If it is benign, it feels firm as if you are touching the nose. Yes. But... Having said that, early prostate cancer may, you, I mean, you may not be able to palpate it at all, mm -hmm. but at least it helps to complete the assessment. Okay. And then if you have symptoms too, there's a way that, I mean, we'll ask you further questions to rule out other diseases like diabetes and co. And then we do a scoring system. That helps us to know whether you need medications mm. to shrink the prostate or not. So by and large, Assessing your prostate is not a big deal. Some of the labs you can just walk in. And then most of the um, facilities around, talking about private facilities, always have a urology on, a urologist on call. And even the uh, major facilities too, mm. they do. Mm. Mm. Yeah, so you don't have to wait till you see symptoms before, mm. before you, you get you it checked. In. Okay, okay. Yeah. That's interesting. But, Doc, can it be pre prevented? <laughs> Um, yeah, I mean, prostate cancer can always be prevented. Mm. And the reason is very simple. I talked about some of these risk factors, and they are related to lifestyle, mm. basically, related to lifestyle. So, so when, when you begin to cut down yes, yeah, on all these, you are likely to be on the road to preventing prostate cancer. Exactly. That is, that is one, one way. So dietary modification, mm. you lower... Yes, in Kualano, you leave the, chi uh, the meat and then the, the big stuff for them. Mm. Uh, when you, somebody said, throughout life, 
He didn't enjoy it. Now is the time now for him to a... enjoy. We You're are being told to chew, chew. Yes. Don't take this. Don't take that. Yeah. But you see, it's, life is all about. It's a balancing game. Yeah. Yeah. Moderation is the key. So even if you have to chew your meat, you remember that. Chewing moderation. Uh -huh. Yeah. So that. Um, so adopt more vegetables. Tomatoes. Mm. Very, very important. More vegetables, the melons, the fruits, etc. in your diet. Move more towards fish, lean meat than the, uh, than, than the fatty stuff. More exercise, mm -hmm. at least within the week. Um, if you can do um, three days, 30 minutes, you know, work up. Okay. Uh, yeah, it, 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 it helps a lot. Mm -hmm. Try to trim your weight so that fat deposition at strange places will not mm -hmm. be a trigger for extra testosterone uh, production. And then get some rest. Mm, interesting. Mm. So, 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 I am certain that before, before, before somebody gets or begins to get these uh, signs, and then obviously gets to a point where then it's probably confirmed that there is that cancer in there. Mm. Um, does it also suggest that there are stages of the cancer should someone have? Yeah. The the good thing, <laughs> um, I'm saying it um, um, advisedly, because <laughs> any time you diagnose somebody with cancer, there's nothing good about it. <laughs> but, <laughs> 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 but the good thing about prostate cancer is that it's a slow-growing um, tumor. Okay. Slow-growing to the extent that even for some of our patients, they may not need treatment. They may not need treatment, particularly those who have other, you know, um, conditions, heart conditions, kidney, liver conditions. In fact, when you do the full evaluation, you realize that it is those conditions that may make the patient even pass on than the prostate cancer. Okay. So those people, we don't touch them because mm -hmm. the risk of treating, treating may even give them side effects than yeah. You know, you live in them alone, mm -hmm. you know. So the disease comes in different stages. There is a test that we do to confirm the presence of the disease called a biopsy. Biopsy. And basically, we put a well-lubricated instrument, the backside, and it shows a prostate on a monitor. And we're able to use a fine needle or a, or a biopsy gun to take the prostate. And that is where it's... It is assessed, and then it tells us the severity of the disease right from the assessment. Okay. Yeah, and you're able to classify it as mild, moderate, severe in terms of risk. Now, after doing that, you have to do some imaging, you know, um, test, which will show you how far the disease has gone. Is it confined to the prostate? Oh, it's or has it gone to other parts of the yeah. body? That, in a way, helps you to classify the severity and advise the patient on the best, you know, form of treatment. So, yes, it comes in different, you know, grades of severity and mm. the treatments are different. Mm. Well, there's, there's so much to learn when it comes to prostate cancer. For me, I've made my statement and I say that prostate cancer is a man's corona. That's all mm. I can say for now. I'm going to go on the second break. Uh, please stay with us. We'll be back shortly to give you more. Welcome back. If you're just joining us, we are here discussing the issues of prostate when it comes to men. Prostate cancer and uh, what risk it is, uh, who is at risk, um, where can you go to test or to check, at what point should you go and check, what are some of the symptoms you should know at an early stage to begin to think of going to check. These are all the things that uh, we are discussing today. And I'm in the studio with Dr. Bernard Tobo. Uh, he's a urologist from the Kolebu Teaching Hospital. Doc. We are back. Yeah. So, there is this thing people say about <laughs> sex, okay? <laughs> so, I hear people say uh, s frequent sex 
helps prevent prostate. And then others also say uh, frequent sex is a, is a risk factor. Can you throw some more light, some light on that? So, um, <coughs> yes, there's a study that was done in Harvard mm -hmm. which established the fact that, you know, multiple ejaculations is actually protective. Okay. If they put a figure to it, 20, 21 ejaculations 21 times in a month. In a month. Mm. That one I know. <laughs> <laughs> but I always tell people that, um, you see, sex is a lot of exercise. Mm. It's involving. So um, don't go along that tangent alone. Try okay. to add the other things like lifestyle modifications and stuff. And yes, I won't tell. Mm, truthfully, you just might not be able to do that to anyone. Eh? Uh -huh. <laughs> it's not realistic. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. Um, so you bring the other things, lifestyle modifications, mm. that would help. On the flip side, uh -huh. see, if you're having frequent sex, um, not with a faithful partner, with, but w with multiple partners, mm -hmm. it has been established that some of the infections you may contract, particularly the viruses like HPV, human papilloma virus, mm -hmm. these things can convert normal cells into cancerous cells. Okay. Yes. So that is where the, ris the risk with That's multiple... That's also then... Okay. Yes. So uh, you, you have the pros and the Yes, mm -hmm. yes. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. sexually transmitted infection, particularly with these viruses, which can change normal cells to cancerous cells, is, is well established. In interesting. Mm -hmm. So then what we hear about sex um, being... Um, a preventive measure is within some a certain way context. within a certain context. Yes. Obviously, looking at uh, rather ejaculations than the sex itself. <laughs> trying to polish your lifestyle helps because then you might not be able to, able to achieve that whole you know spe uh, uh, suggested timing of twenty one. So, like I said, sex by itself is exercise. Uh, it's a lot of work. A lot of work. <laughs> <laughs> so add the other things so that you can go along. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, <coughs> you become depressed if you yeah. cannot meet that 21, you know, target in a month. Mm -hmm. I, I, the, ne the next thing I want to know is whether it's curable. But before I go there, yeah. there is this point that you made about families who have that in their, their, their stream or in, yeah. in their, uh, what do you call that? Uh, um, I mean, they line, have yes. that in their line. Mm -hmm. So with such people... When you come across such a family, I'm just trying to assume how a young man in that family will feel knowing this. How, how would you begin to speak to such a person knowing it's, that? It, 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 it can be very, you know, um, depressing, particularly when they lose a close, you know, relation. Hmm. But the truth has to be told. Yeah. And you have to be, um, you have to act with empathy at the same time too you have to be quite frank about it let them know the whole truth nothing but the truth and um, um, it's important especially when we lose somebody like that i always advise that every male in the family every male in the family has to, once check. You, it has to check once you get to 30 or 35 make sure you run your assessments and then um Get a urologist as a friend. Mm. Your yeah. closest friend. You're my closest <laughs> friend now, from today, from now, right now, right now, right now. Mm. They say in Ghana, you know, the pastor, what, a policeman, <laughs> and, the, and, the and the doctor. The yeah. doctor. These are your best friends. Yeah, they should be your best uh, friends. Uh, yes. Uh, mm, so, mm. things of that nature, you 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 counsel them. Because I'm, I'm just I'm just imagining. So, so okay, so if it was me, for example, knowing this that mm. I have this 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 as as part of a line in my family. Mm. So then I sit, I, I'm in life, I just sit and I know that at some point in life, I'm definitely going to get there. And so, irrespective of all, it, it, that is has, there been, has there been any, any proof against it at some point you where you someone see, has been able to stay or without getting it, irrespective of the family line? You see, when you look at the pattern of, you know, um, uh, what do we call it, genetic, um, should I call it mutation, or handing over from one 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 uh, generation to the other. To the other, it may change. Okay. Sometimes you can have a direct, you know, transference. Sometimes you can have what we call skipping of, you know, mm. generations. Mm. And particularly, even even though you may have those um, genetic factors, 
it has been found that they work very closely with the environmental factors. Okay. So if you can modify your um, <coughs> lifestyle such that you adopt more healthy lifestyle, you then will. probably you may not, or if it may appear, because most often than not, those who have it in their family tend to develop the disease even at an earlier age. Hmm. You know, so even it may appear in your situation, it may even be late. Okay. Yeah, as, as, as. Okay. So it may not necessarily, otherwise you're going to walk your life, you know, being quite um, uh, pessimistic as if something is hanging <laughs> <laughs> on your head <laughs> at a certain age that this uh. is going to happen. No, that, that rather should reinforce your, you know, um, um, uh, what we call it, your screening, making sure that you check yourself very well mm. and then adopt your healthy lifestyle. Your healthy lifestyle, yeah. okay. Mm. So, so then no, knowing all these, let me now ask you, is it curable? In a way, yes. You see, every cancer, every cancer when it is discovered at an early stage, is curable. And prostate cancer is no exception. Okay. There's no exception. And basically, if you have to cure prostate cancer, there are two main interventions, either surgery or radiation therapy. Okay. And that can cure you, I mean, even up to 100%. So, yes, if the cancer is discovered at an early stage, definitely it can be, it can be cured. When the disease spread to other parts of the body, the bone, the liver, the lungs, then there's nothing much you can do. All that you can do is to give medications that would relieve symptoms, give the patient a quality of life, a good quality of life, because pain is one, you know, bad symptoms with regard to prostate cancer. Mm. So you give the patient a quality of life so that he can live, you know, quite longer. Okay. If it spreads, you cannot cure. Mm. You just control mm. it. You just control but it. But once it is localized within the prostate, as evidenced by the test that you do, definitely, once you do your surgery or your radiation therapy, you can cure. I, I guess I guess it's one of the reasons why we always urge people to have it checked even much earlier exactly. so that then it can be contained. Exactly. Mm. But looking at the, the, the surgery and then the radiation uh, therapy, are there any side effects to any of these? So, um, definitely. I mean, um, before patients are operated on, for instance, um, the possible complications are mentioned to you. I mean, it doesn't mean that we operate to go and create complications. <laughs> 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 but you should be in the know, at least, um, yeah. before you give us your consent. Um, thank God, I mean, now things are improving okay. and very fast. Our complication rates are, you know, becoming less and mm -hmm. less. Mm -hmm. For surgery in particular, the main complications that people dread or that are on the table is um, the erectile dysfunction. Okay. The erectile dysfunction. Um, the surgery that we do for the cancer is called a radical prostatectomy. So um, sometimes the nerves which helps you with erection. They are very close to the prostate. Mm. They are very close to the prostate. So, but like I said, things are well developed now. We are able to avoid those nerves. Okay. Sometimes you end up sacrificing those nerves because from the assessment, your CT scan, MRI, you realize that the cancer has already spread to those nerves already. And that may be what uh, may be causing the rectal dysfunction even before you go and do the surgery. Okay. So, in order to not to leave any tumor behind, you, you might take, as well just you have take to take the nerves out. Out, you know, mm -hmm. along the side, and then you end up with erectile dysfunction. But thankfully, even after surgery, when you have erectile dysfunction, there are remedies, mm -hmm. there are drugs, there are devices which can always help to, you know, uh, bring the the kujubi up. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. So. Kujovi has become one of the very important things. In fact, the, it's always the important thing. That yes. The, the, the other uh, side effect uh -huh. is when the urine leaks uncontrollably. Okay. You remember I mentioned the fact that the prostate is a gatekeeper. Yes. Once you take it out of, out of the way, in a way, an aspect of the control of the continence me mechanism 
has been taken away. Mm. So the patients sometimes leak a little, but it's not a big deal. Sometimes they are made to do what we call Kegels exercise. Okay. The women know this a lot after delivery and all that, helping you to know how to control the, 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 the urine. So some of them, within a week or two, that leakage um, is sorted, yeah, it's sorted mm -hmm. out. So mm -hmm. it's not uh, so much of a big deal. Okay, so um, we, we, are, we are still discussing the issues of prostate. I urge you all to start sending in your questions, your messages, your contributions. If you have any experience to share, the phone line will also be soon open and then you have a chance to call and then share experience with us. Um, please stay with us. We'll be back shortly um, to continue the discussion. Welcome back. If you are just joining us, we are still in the lounge uh, discussing a man's corona. When I say a man's corona, I'm talking about prostate cancer. That is one of the things that scares almost every man. If, if yeah, it scares, pr practically every man is scared or to hear or, well, not scared, but is worried when we hear about prostate cancer. And indeed, it's important that we start checking ourselves even early enough so that we can prevent these things. It is said that prevention is always better than cure. I'm still here with Dr. Bernard Tobo. Doc. Yes, sir. There's, there's this other question that I've been meaning to ask you. So, um, before I proceed, let me also announce that the phone lines are open now. Feel free to call us, share your thoughts. Uh, if, you, if there's any experience or you have any questions, you can ask Doc. He's here to help uh, to answer. You can also ask me, the other doctor, and I'll be here to answer your <laughs> questions <laughs> as, <laughs> as well. So, Doc, there's yeah. this other question I meant to ask you. Yeah. The, the disease itself, mm. okay, mm. does it have the ability to, f to, uh, to have any effect on fertility? A man's fertility so um, indirectly I mean if um, the early cases no mm. but if the disease spreads to affect the nerves and then you know affects your um, your erection then you may not be able to deliver of course there's nothing to shoot so. exactly mm. sometimes even the early disease you see psychologically when you know you are aware that you have cancer hiding somewhere it can turn you off Mm. It can turn you off. So indirectly, um, yes. When it comes to the treatment, when it comes to the treatment, there, there, are, sit there are certain dicey situations where, you know, the, the, the man involved either hasn't completed a family or has no kids at all. Mm. So in that situation, before the surgery, we'll advise what we call sperm banking. Mm. Mm. You know, and some of these fertility centers have those um, facilities where you can store your sperms for future, you know, um, assisted reproduction, mm -hmm. you know, for your partner. Mm. So then that's obvious to suggest that th th there could be uh, uh, issues, that there could be uh, um, negative issues after treatment yes, when I it mean, comes to fertility. Definitely, definitely. Mm. So, I mean, before, before the surgery, a holistic, you, you go through a holistic kind of discussion so that you know the pros and cons. You know actually what you're going into. Mm. By and large, you're trying to read your system of, you know, this um, dreadful disease. But you should know the implications and then it has to be discussed thoroughly down to the letter so mm. that mm. Um, you know what to do afterwards. Interesting. You obviously will, will be choosing life <laughs> over <laughs> death. I mean, I, I, I suspect everybody will do that. But yeah. then again, you need to know all the implications, uh, just, just as mm. doctor um, is saying. But doc, um, what about cost? Is it expensive to treat cancer? I mean, prostate cancer? I mean, in terms of, you know, there are different surgeries that we do. Mm. For the simple, um, for the benign enlargement, mm -hmm. the one without cancer, usually... Uh, the NHIS will cover it to a large extent. Okay. But when it comes to the cancer by itself, unfortunately, it's not covered by the NHIS. Mm. You know, comparing that to breast cancer for women, for women, they have some kind of coverage. Cover but for mm. men, we have a lot of men in parliament doing yeah, yeah, but they don't think about that. <laughs> <laughs> You you you, you 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 think it's something that we should we should be looking at in parliament. I think so. If, if we have, you know, any child covering part of prostate cancer treatment, mm -hmm. it would do a whole world, world of good. I'm sure it will also mm -hmm. help in encouraging people to even get checked and treat and all that. Well, in a way, yes, mm -hmm. because even PSA test is not covered by the insurance. You have wow. to pay from your own pocket. Mm -hmm. 
So all these things can make the treatment quite frustrating. Mm. Quite frustrating. And I think um, uh, people are listening. Those in the power that be, hmm? they say there's a hashtag of fix what? I'm not there. Oh, you're not there. <laughs> <laughs> so the phone lines are open. The phone number is 0555-657278. 0555-657278. Doctor wants to talk about fix the country. I'm me. trying to shake the table. You want to shake the table there. Eh? <laughs> but of course, I mean, I think you have a point, you know, coming from where you are, okay, the background where you, you are speaking from, mm. you know what, what it is when it comes to cost. You know what the, the, the processes are and everything. And so if you are saying that there is that need. For me, a lame person, I think there should, I agree that there should be the need, especially because I think it will, it, will, it will help encourage people to get tested and it will, it will not discourage people from having checked and all that because then you know that at least there's a certain level of cover to support any cost that they are likely to incur. It can be quite frustrating when somebody has um, early disease, you've spoken to the person and the person is, I mean, has gotten to the point where he's ready for the procedure. And now they have to go round, round, selling this, borrowing money from here. The simple NHS coverage. And then they use that money to sponsor other things which are not necessary. That's sad, but... I'm yeah. shaking the table. Well, I, 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 I think you, I mean, you deserve it. You just mm -hmm. have to because then it's, it's something that has, it's a matter of life and death. And mm -hmm. it's something that is yeah. rather worth the discussion than some yeah. of the other issues I've heard people talk about. There's a caller on the line. Good evening, caller. Your name and where you're calling from? Mark, I am calling from Shama. Hi. Your name, please. I couldn't hear you. Ademu Musa. Hi, Ademu. Please let's hear you. Doctor is here. Yeah, I'm calling from Shama. All right. Please, if you have a diabetes. Okay, if you have diabetes. Yes. Uh huh. So, how can you be tell yourself you don't have a uh, prostate cancer? Okay, so if I understand your question, you're asking that if you have diabetes. How do yeah. you prevent yourself from getting prostate cancer, right? Yes. Okay. Thank you, Adam. Doc, Adam wants to know mm -hmm. if you have diabetes, mm -hmm. how do you prevent yourself from getting um, prostate cancer? I'm sure he thinks diabetes can lead to prostate cancer. There, there is no direct correlation between mm -hmm. diabetes and right. prostate cancer. Mm -hmm. At best, you know, the only relation is uh, the fact that some of the urinary symptoms may look quite similar. Okay. Yes, they look quite similar, but uh, you don't have a direct, you know, uh, no, no, not at all. Mm -hmm. But by and large, like I've spoken, um, I alluded to earlier, he can run it some checks to make sure that um, he has no prostate issues. Issues. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, Adamu, you should run some checks and make sure you don't have any prostate issues. But there is no correlation between diabetes and then uh, the prostate cancer. So, um, Doc. One one thing I've been I've been I, I I want to find out. So beyond beyond the treatment, or even before treatment, some diseases that I know mm -hmm. you know can easily be transferred. Okay. Okay. Now, is there anything like that when it comes to prostate cancer? A apart from being a, in the family line, is can can it be transferred from one person to the other in any way? So that reminds me of uh, one of my. <laughs> patients who came to the clinic with the wife. Uh -huh. So the wife was bent on getting the answer directly from me. The wife had a prost the husband had prostate cancer, so she came to us the same thing. Mm. Whether something of that sort can be transferred to her and I had to explain to her that no. Cancer is not, you know, transferable. Okay. It's not transferable. Mm. Um, it, it it stays within the uh, the man's system and um, if it is cured, it is cured. There's nothing like transparency. Mm. Well, unfortunately, this is all time would allow us to do. But, Doc, yes, before you leave, mm. shake the table once more. <laughs> Your final words, <laughs> and let's go. <laughs> so, basically, like I pointed out, prostate cancer is um, comparing all the other races in the world. It is quite common among us blacks, both in the continent and in, in the diaspora. And... Um, one of the important things you can uh, gifts you can give to yourself, especially on your fortieth birthday, make sure your prostate is assessed. It shouldn't take you by surprise, and don't wait for symptoms because most prostate cancer situations don't present with symptoms very early. 
Because once it is discovered early, you are very sure that um, you can um, get um, a very good cure. The other thing too is the fact that some people discourage people from coming to the hospital for assessments and offer other alternative forms of remedy. Uh, it is not the dog who twitch back seen or loudest, which is the bravest dog. And sometimes a small one, you know. So um, we advise people, there are recognized places where you can go for prostate assessments so that you are checked very well and then given very good treatment so that you can help to fix mm. the country, Ghana. Thank you. <laughs> I finished shaking. Doc, <laughs> thank you so much for being part of it. I mean, there was, there was one that I wanted to ask, but uh, maybe I should just ask you. So this prostate tea and tabs and pills that we've been hearing around, do they help? You want me to shake it further? It's okay. <laughs> thank you so much. So thank you also for being part of our evening. Uh, we'll bring you another exciting episode next week with a very a very interesting discussion. Let me remind you, there's Christian Connect, and there's, there's also the, the Hangout. Okay. So um, these are very important programs that we have on Sundays on ETV. Make ETV Ghana your Sunday friend, and you get to enjoy these programs. We are out. We'll be back next week with another episode of the Men's Lounge. Thank you. <laughs>